right, let's talk about that 69-50 against Mali then. Your immediate thoughts after this game are what? Well, my immediate thoughts are I'm glad to get that monkey off our back. Um, we've lived the history, I suppose, of 2018 Commonwealth Games and coming in fourth and losing to Malawi twice. Uh, so that was one of the discussions that we had leading into this game to lay that to bed. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's just it's just been lingering there, hasn't it? I, I I don't think that. And let me, you know, just make a big assumption here. I don't think that you would have thought we were going to lose that game. But it's just is it more just the psychological thing of going right, done, parked it? Yeah, definitely. I think once again, these opportunities don't come around uh, until you know every four years and. Everything has been referred to us in the Commonwealth Games about that loss. Um, so, you know, it was one for the sisterhood, if I'm going to be honest, put the pressure on ourselves, but also to ensure that we don't take that history or that negativity for us in the next generation. So it had to be parked, and, and I'm really happy that we were able to sustain the pressure and, and do the job at the end. It's fascinating to hear, isn't it? Because we always get told the PR side of it that, oh, no, you know, we flush the dunny, we move on. These things, you know, don't sort of last long. But, I mean, for us fans, they last long. And just on the human side of it, I would naturally expect, of course, it lasts long until you get a chance to rewrite. Yeah, and I, I know it's always a fine line because sometimes you can't do anything until, you know, once again the Commonwealth Games comes around. I do think sometimes we try and hide <laughs> from some of the history of what we've done and, and don't revisit because it brings up bad memories. But once again, as I say, it had to be addressed and it was and you know we were able to come back, um, not negating Malawi and, and how amazing they are, but I think this game was for us um, and, and for bigger, probably a bigger purpose that we needed to seal off. Dame Nolan Toto is with us out of Birmingham, Commonwealth Games on the platform. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to pay credit to the Malawi Queens because, you know, that was for them. You imagine what was going through their heads four years ago. How exciting. How have they developed since that time, in your opinion? Oh, I think that's, that is, I think when I look at world netball, and even though we were on the bad side of the, of the coin, definitely African netball, I think, has risen. I mean, we played Uganda a couple of days ago, and man, holy heck, they took us to the wire. And Malawi's in that same sort of region as well. So, you know, for us to be strong in netball, in world netball, we need to ensure once again that we support these, these countries, but also that they are competitive as well, and certainly they are. And it was probably a big major shift for them in regards to their psyche when they actually did beat us in 2018. So that's a good thing all around. Yeah, it's got to be, doesn't it? I mean, you know, in term, you know, I mean, obviously putting the result aside, but I mean, that just must have been a thrill for them. Also against Uganda, and I watched that game as well, and I actually wrote a couple of notes to ask you about, hoping to get to talk to you. 40 goals conceded against Uganda and another 50 tonight against Malawi. Are, are you happy with that defence? Um, it's hard to know. Can I maybe say I'm looking forward to England playing against Uganda uh, tomorrow, knowing that Uganda had a bit of a rest. Once I see that and see how they respond, that will give us a bit of a, I suppose, give me a bit of a um, understanding as to what, how far or close we are sure. from the big ones. So. Um, I, 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 it, it, it was just so uncertain and so un, unorthodox, and they were good. Um, they pulled us apart quite a lot, and, and we stayed in structure, and if anything, what we did uh, adapt as it went on, we started to attack the ball more, um, and that's probably our whole mindset of how we can stay in structure, especially in the beginning, absorb the pressure, and then start to attack. So... These are the things that we're learning on the trot and uh, not ever playing uh, South Afri um, the African countries until you get to the Commonwealth Games or a Netball World Cup that you actually learn what it's all about. I remember this way back when, and I, you would have as a player as well, that when Jamaica first became a force and just the difference that they brought, different style of game. It's like the All Blacks. You don't play the same against Ireland as you do against Africa, and I know that you know this. So this must be, it's, 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 it must be kind of the way you build through these tournaments. This is really important, isn't it, gauging how the other teams play and how to add react and how to, and how to adjust, as you say, on the fly. 
Yeah, definitely. I think the key thing for us is irrelevance of the opposition and defensive strategy that we put out there. We are going to get the ball. We always do. We always turn over the ball. The key thing for us is keeping ball retention and what I say is being really patient to grind it out um, and ensuring that it might be the last 58th minute or something that it starts to open up. So I think that's the key for us, irrelevant of the opposition in the style, we're still learning in that. And probably at times become too frivolous and move away from what we say that we're going to do. So I think tonight was a better performance from us in that respect, yep. knowing that when we do meet Trinidad, do meet England, that ball position, ball retention is huge. Are you happy with the pace that you're playing? Um, look, sometimes we look like we're stuttering and sputtering and, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, just getting through. But can I tell you, I don't care what the hell we look like, uh, as long as we get the bloody W on yep. the board. Yep. Uh, if we have little parties and little corners, I don't care. Right. And keep ball retention, that's what we need to do. So at times we look beautiful, at not times it opens up. But I also think that's a bit of our Achilles heel, is that we want to play that flamboyant, we want to play the flair, but we haven't done enough of the grind or, or, or got enough respect, I think, and done that hard work ethic to open ourselves up. So I, I still feel that the tight, ugly-looking game is what we have to do um, to win. How close are you to your A team in your, in your own mind? And, and also the sub part of that question is, are you prepared if players are all of a sudden just playing out of their brains, you're going to make those uh, adjustments if you have to? Yeah, I'm prepared for that second thing that you've said around yeah. um, uh, adjustments being made. I'm, I'm double prepared on that. What I don't believe is that we have a starting seven. Um, and even if I did start with a seven, I'm not, I'm not too sure that we'll be able to carry it through. And that's just mainly because of an experience in some positions, but also our ability to hold the intensity. So, you know, yes, we've had a lot of combinations out there, but there's been a method to the madness or a purpose around that, that we are consolidating in different units, but also knowing that when I make a change, that those changes have had enough court time. So, you know, we'll see what that looks like as it, as it drags through uh, for the remainder of the game. Dame Nolan Toto is with us. A couple more quick questions. I'll let you go, and I thank you so much for your time. Look, one of the things that stuck in my mind after the World Championships and talking to you when, when we won that was just the, the, just the tactician in you, that final quarter, remember, against Australia, and I know that you will actually remember it. They had their A team out on deck, and we closed that gap, and I remember you said to me that, all of a sudden you got the feeling, oh, okay, we can actually get to these guys. This, this is the way we can do it. Are, are you still in that mindset, sort of isolating and separating every game and every quarter against these teams, especially Trinidad and England, to come knowing that, okay, if these are the kind of crucial little things that can actually propel you towards gold? Yeah, definitely. In January, uh, we had the quad series over in UK and um, we've been tracking the numbers uh, over the last two or three years, actually, since Netball World Cup finished in 2019, and uh, looking and seeing what the trends are, not only for the teams, but also individuals. So it was just a matter of time as to looking at what it looks like here, um, and we're just sort of starting to finalise after this round as to what's real and what's not. So we go into these games with our eyes wide open and a lot of our strategy or selections have been based on these last three games um, and the different strategies that we want to put out there. So um, I would like to think that we've done a lot of work and obviously it's about us being able to execute. Uh, you can talk all you like <laughs> and write all the words out on the book. Sure. Um, but, you know, as always, it's about whether we can deliver. But I, I feel we're well prepared more than we were going into the Netball World Cup. Wow. Um, and I'm excited by that, I, I, I think. You know, I feel we are the underdog. Uh, and, and I love that. I love that uh, title. All right, then. All the very best. I won't even mention Australia yet. We'll do that the next time that we talk. We've got Trinidad. Let's knock them yeah. over first. And then we've got England, just one at a time. Congratulations. Thank you so much again. Awesome. Cheers, matey.